Hi, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about electron counting and the Aufbau principle. The Aufbau principle or modeling rule suggests the order in which the orbitals in an atom are filled with electrons and is based on the relative energies of the orbitals. As orbitals get further from the nucleus, their energy increases so the first orbital filled is the 1s, then the 2s, the 2p, then the 3s, and so on until all the electrons have been placed in orbitals. While the Aufbau principle is based on the energies, there is some basis in quantum numbers as the order is based on the sum of the n and l quantum numbers. When orbitals have the same sum of n and l, the orbital with the lower n value is filled first. For more on quantum numbers, check out the video in the description. The Aufbau principle can be used to determine the electron configuration of a particular atom. For example, a neutral oxygen atom has eight electrons. Let's start adding the electrons to the orbitals, each of which can hold at most two electrons. First, the 1s orbital is filled with electrons, one spin up and one spin down. Next is the 2s, and finally the last four electrons will go in the 2p subshell. Hunt's rule states that for electrons of the same energy level and subshell, we add one to each orbital before pairing them with another electron, which makes one, two, three, and finally the fourth is paired, giving eight electrons in the electron configuration of oxygen. That means that oxygen has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. The number in front of the letter is the n quantum number or energy level of the orbital. The letter comes from the subshell or orbital type and corresponds to the l quantum number. And the superscript number is the number of electrons in that subshell. There is an easier method for electron counting making use of the periodic table. This is possible because it is arranged by the position of the last electron in each element. We can read left to right, top to bottom, until we get to the element we are interested in. On the left is the S block, on the right the P block, the D block in the middle, and the F block at the bottom. Now let's do this process for oxygen. The 1s is full, so that is 1s2. The 2s is also full, so that is 2s2. And finally we count across the p-block until we get to oxygen, which shows that there are four electrons in the p-shell, so that will be 2p4, giving us our final oxygen electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Another way of writing out electronic configurations is to abbreviate the first part of the electronic configuration with the preceding noble element from the row above. For oxygen this would be helium. This represents the inner or core electrons after which we write down the outer or valence electrons as normal. Let's check comprehension. 